Ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Accurately Precisely Playing, where we are restarting the game. Because you know fucking what, I'm good at uh, recording, so I forgot to record. And we had yet to experience this ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly, three weeks were left and we all fantasized about our dream prom dates. We were all screaming to catch the attention of one of our six charismatic classmates. Miranda Waterbilt, the sweet mermaid princess who was cute to see what she had... Uh, she, yeah, uh, genocidal. Damien LaVey, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and love of fire. Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with his stupidly huge heart. Lime the Lion Court, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dwarf. Polly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all wrong, the wrong things. <laughs> and Vera Oberlin, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear, it had to be one of them. But who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom dates, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they're rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster mm. Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever trademark will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and, and turn your answers into character stats. You get the chance to produce a movie. It's based on the most influential Russian novelist of the... Oh, God. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what does it say? Uh, I guess it is um, 1012. No. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> God. <damn it>. Escape! <laughs> All right. Uh, the 19th century. Yeah. They don't remember anything about last night. And now they can't find the manuscript of the, the Brothers Karmasov or Dostoyevsky has to deliver today. <laughs> Something about superheroes, but with a love triangle between the beautiful yet somewhat relatable girl. Maybe she's always stating she's a mess. And two of the super hot superheroes, which are also like vampires or pirates or both. Instant hit. Two cool guys walking away from rad explosions. And they don't look at the explosions. They don't give a fuck about explosions. They reflect on life and love. But it's super dope and kick ass because they do so walking away from never explosions. <laughs> so fucking yeah. metal. That's a fucking Long Island song though. I think I'll take that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I will be original and take the super hot superheroes. All right, this one we had before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, the one at the bottom. No wait, oh, no wait, wait. No, the one with the, one the, the top. Change the order. Oh god. Oh, oh tr such trickery. And I will pick oh, the one with the violins. With the violins. <laughs> Find a genie in a bottle. You can ask for whatever you want. What do you ask for? Infinite hmm. confetti, of course. I don't ask for anything. I drink the genie from the bottle. I can grant my own wishes. It's French. Ah. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so adorable. So fucking cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah no, now you just sound like the Kool Aid guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Him to not be so cliched. Genie and wishes. So mainstream. Oh. I already hate you. I will go to... <laughs> <laughs> a rainbow that you can eat. Before asking for anything, you try to negotiate up to three standard wishes. Up to... Oh shit, what? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> I mean... Before... Or maybe... <laughs> <laughs> I ask for his friendship. Uh... So when I get him to be my friend, I can ask for wishes. Yes, you can abuse his friendship. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the sociopath way. <laughs> of course. I will fucking drink that motherfucker. Well, oh okay, I got the demon God. again. God <laughs> fucking damn it. 
so uh, yeah, y just quick summarize for uh, the viewers. <coughs> Uh, you, you will choose a place and uh, there will be people there uh, and you have like 12 weeks on you to uh, to uh, accomplish uh, fucking people with your mm. with your dingle dong mm. a noble goal <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll take class uh, because I'm a good boy mm. yes I can see that after you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons sometimes after all the monster nonsense and dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity in high school. You gain two smarts. Later, you're minding your own business, which soon proves to be difficult when you notice Damien and Scott in the vicinity in some hot, sweaty arm wrestling. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Unfortunately, you can't enjoy it very long since stupid, strong Scott beats Damien in time. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems you're the only one mad at the outcome of this situation. <laughs> oh, he's going Super Saiyan. Am I gonna? I'm gonna take Damon then, though. I guess if you're going for Damon, though, you'll have to talk to yourself a lot. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try to fuck that dude. Okay. So yeah, I'll go for Scott then, though. Oh fuck! I can't speak. <laughs> 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 My Swedish heritage is leaking through me. Oh, yeah. This is so unfair. Um, mm. This is so unfair. That one didn't count, Scott. We should arm wrestles, but with guns. But bro, we got these two guns already. And by guns, I mean my big arm muscles. Which, just to be clear, are not real guns. But still. Shut up, I will murder you. No, no, no! Arm wrestling proves nothing! To say who's the very best, we should, uh... And we should scream at the huge rock until it breaks, just because of our pure rage and awesomeness! <laughs> I, I believe he would fit fucking perfectly in the Metalocalypse. <laughs> or, uh, we should subdue a tiger with just a scary and manly look! <laughs> Yes, uh, of uh, yes, this will be the man I will fuck. <laughs> uh, how's the voice, by the way? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a soft start, at least. I might subdue it a little bit. <laughs> just maybe. Bro, now you're just quoting stuff from yesterday's episode of Ultimate Warriors of Mount Awesome. Face it, bro. I'm just an ultimate warrior. No! Arm wrestling doesn't mean shit! <laughs> hey, you, Daniel. Not because arm wrestling isn't going my way. I've just decided you should settle this time by proposing a way to decide who the real ultimate warrior is around here. Uh, you will get two choices, and uh, the both choices will be in favor of either side. So you're gonna fi have to figure out which stuff would benefit which side. And sometimes they won't benefit either. So, so there's a good side and a bad side, sometimes. I happen to be registered ultimate warrior. Judge, and I always carry this 10 step ultimate test with you, which coincidentally will require both of you to do whatever I say with them. It's like we all got good boys. Who's ready to follow? Or whoever can punch the sun in. Whoever can punch the sun in the face. I, I believe <laughs> this is quite obvious which one's the more <laughs> brutal of the two. Uh, since you're going with Damien, I should probably back up. You get pretty catty with that, so I, I'll take uh, the. The nerdy one. Whoa, bro, what a sweet coincidence. I'm the goodest of the good boys. <laughs> I'm gonna win in no time. But only if you order me to win. Scott, this idiot is trying to fool us into doing all kinds <laughs> of mean tasks. It's become Arnold Schwarzenegger. Scott, it's that Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, keep, yeah, keep going. Yeah, come on. Uh oh, no, wait! You tried to fool me in, in, into not dying, in, do, what, fuck. <laughs> not doing the thing so you can become the ultimate warrior of Mount Awesome. Oh, Damien, you smart genius. Nope, you're totally giving them your menial task for the. Why you waste time trying to fool me into thinking Daniel is trying to fool me? I'll be starting taking the first task, which is hacking Daniel's phone and sex his grab on his behalf? That doesn't sound nice, but maybe it's a test, right? A test to become the ultimate warrior! 
Loaded with the rocket fuel. Loaded with the worst. <laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim. <laughs> that's Randy Savage, you idiot. <laughs> but that's the only quote I know from wrestling. <laughs> what? Let me check that list. Burning Daniel's house down. <laughs> Stabbing Daniel was he's asleep. Stabbing the burnt remains of Daniel's house. This is a great list. I can totally... Be ready, Daniel. I'll become the ultimate warrior in no time. This week will be extra fun for both of us. Probably more for me than for you. What just happened? Oh no, you left your list of menial tasks in your locker. You accidentally gave them your list of things you hope never happen to you. <laughs> <clears throat> it happens to the best of us. What a silly mistake. In any case, why the fuck would you keep a list like that with... I mean, this one's on you, pal. You lose two smarts and one f fun for now, but be ready to lose a lot more the next few days. You, you know the knowledge you got from class? Fuck that shit! This proves the educational system is, is whack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I believe I won't be able to meet Damien this week then, because I already met him. Oh. So I will just, um, I will just go to, to, uh, to the auditorium. Yeah. Mm. You're an aesthetic student. That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you, figuratively, oral sex. Nice. This game is naughty. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generation, <coughs> which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain two creativity. Oof. Getting this creative po Oh! Later you see Damien and Miranda Whoa. shouting oop oop and being a noisy little bitch you decide to insert yourself into the conversation. Oh right, I was the noisy little bitch. Yeah. Lovely. Noisy little bitch Beautiful. I look forward to this adventure so. Is there anything more wonderful than getting insight into the lives of commoners? You better not pull that shit the whole time. My dads are lords of hell, you know. Technically, I'm royalty too. Hmm. Are you though? Damien rolls his eyes and turns to you. Mrs. Panthera paired us up for a hands-on ho- Going on an adventure. Apparently, I have some anger issues and a thirst for violence. <laughs> but I should be channeling into something productive. <laughs> like a thirst for violence is productive in and of itself. And I'm supposed to work on being more independent. Which is so strange since I told my ladies and gentlemen in waiting to fix that for me last week. Huzzah! I wonder what sort of adventure might give us the wonderful experience we need to figure out perceive, but obviously non existential hey. flaws. She's Daisy. Oh right, you oh I didn't see that. This is fucking true. <laughs> And you're just some guy from like Darksiders or something. <laughs> Red Lord. So now go on a deep sea quest to steal beautiful pearls from a scary kraken. <laughs> Journey to a volcano to have a hot time at the Fire Mephit Mef Strip Club. <laughs> uh, f fuck it, I will uh, go on a deep sea quest to steal beautiful pearls. That sounds lame. Let's go to strip club. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Volcano hooker. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> <sighs> I cannot pretend to condone sex work. Oh, what the fuck are those eyes? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what will make it so fun. I'll get to have some more superior and holier than thou. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeling morally superior in order to start naked fire methods? And that will make you independent. <laughs> yes, and you and you'll cur cur fuck. I can't read for fucking <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> and you'll curtail your passion for violence because it'll be re 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 redirected. Yeah, yeah, redirected into your pa passion for romancing fire methods. I hope we're pronouncing that right. Methods. <laughs> My pits. My pits, man. My pits. Romancing. Right. Surely you wish to see them naked so you know who's the most marriageable and whom to court. Uh. Yes. 
Um, and with that. Ah, nah, mm, ah, now it's my turn playing. I am the vo I am the narrator when it's my turn, and you're the narrator when you are oh, turn. Sure. I don't, I don't want you to speak on the whole of my episode. Yeah. I won't accept <laughs> it. <laughs> and with that, mm. they're off to find a properly seed vo properly seedy. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Seedies, uh, you know. The dirty. sperms. Yeah, oh it's, my. it's dirty and filthy. Uh, nice. You gain two fun and one creativity. Okay, uh, everybody choose a celebrity. Say your choices out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. So you will choose a random celebrity, uh, a real celebrity. And uh, then the, it will give us something like uh, which <coughs> of these celebrities will win in a death fight or something like that. All right. Uh, and, uh, uh, I will, I will pick my uh, lord and savior, Gary Busey. <coughs> I'll pick uh, Sean Connery. Okay. Yes. Players order to decide based on how likely it is that the selected celebrity is secretly related to David. Okay, that would be Gary Busey. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I've not nearly have a cool voice enough uh, to be <laughs> related to Sean Connery. But I do have some brain damage. <laughs> so yeah, I win um, this one. Yeah. Oh, that's fast. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are you disagreeing with me? <laughs> I don't remember who Gary B is. <laughs> then just Google him. Whatever. You can have this one. Do I have brain damage or a cool voice? You have. You don't have a cool voice. <laughs> oh, you nasty boy. <laughs> I win this one. Uh, the only thing that this does is that I <clears> will <throat> start picking where to go this week. <clears throat> Mm, uh, so, so now, it, no wait, it's the same week now. Uh, it's uh, lunch, and uh, I will pick what table I want to sit by. Uh, and the one in the middle is the store. I believe the girl, uh, th this girl cat thingy is uh, a cat, where you can buy used tampon and other nice things. What was uh, the... Uh, the tiger man. Tiger. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's uh, the, the one on the corn... Yeah, Tommy from the cornflakes. The, the old Frosties. Tommy. Yeah. Great. 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 <laughs> no, wait, uh, that's from Winnie the Pooh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I, I will go and table sit by Damien so I can get my <laughs> brutal prince. Your evil man. You find yeah. Damien and Vera hunched over a scale <laughs> model of spooky national bank made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. All right. We'll go in, th in through the side entrance, disable the alarms with an EMP, and blow th the safe. <laughs> Why don't you just blow up the side entrance, blow up the alarms, and blow up the safe? Because we only have so much C4, Damien. That sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. Damien points to a kosher dill pickle in front of the vault labeled Police Ogre. That's the Police Ogre. He's got eyes all the way around his head. Never sleep doesn't take bribes, and is invincible in combat. Can we blow him up? No, we can't blow him up. We need to find a way around him. <laughs> well, I'm out of ideas. Yo, David. Well, I'm out of ideas. Yo, David. We'll cut you in on the heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. What the fuck? It cuts you out on the ogre part. Ogre problem for us. <laughs> Yes, make this it's a fucking the... editing struggle for me. <laughs> we'll cut you in on the heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. Fuck, just yes, put it in there. Let's put in solve this ogre problem for us. Just put flex tape on it. <laughs> Luckily, you're a heist mastermind. Before Vera or Damon can react, you eat the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Quick as a flash, you snatch the pickle <laughs> off the table and bite it in half. Yes! Success! Tuck it <laughs> Fucking hell! Daniel! Once again! <laughs> yes. Success. Suck it, ogre. <laughs> that doesn't actually solve the- Look, Vera. Now the path to the vault is clear. You can blow it open and get with the cash. <clears throat> but the ogre is still there! The map doesn't lie, Vera. I see no ogre. Fine. 
Why don't you two just rob the <coughs> bank then? I'll focus on my illegal drug trade. What the fuck? <laughs> that came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> You're happy to share the romantic heist with Damien. Okay. Together you eat the uh, actual ogre just like you ate the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone knows police ogres are the ultimate. Oh, from DC. Oh my god, they're implying sex. Nice. I already boned him. I win the game. David wins. <laughs> I guess I'll go to the nerd and ghost table to see what's up with You find Polly and Liam not eating as usual. You know, because they're undead. <laughs> you know, the food in this cafeteria really is atrocious. It's hardly even worth of my Instagram. <laughs> what? I don't even eat the food. See, this is exactly what I mean. We can't do this much better than these superb culinary abortions. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean the two of us should have a cook-off? What? No! <laughs> Did you say something? I'm not listening because I'm so psyched about cook-off. At no point did I agree to- I've got a huge advantage though, because I've cooked so many drugs. <laughs> oh, you think you got the advantage, huh? I've been alive <laughs> for centuries of culinary history. It's on, like Donkey Kong. The two of them dash into the kitchen, bring all rules of locks, and common decency as it's cooking. Two celebrity chefs judges appear to critique ch 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 the challengers. Where's the fucking lamb sauce? <laughs> <laughs> this chicken is raw! I think they're both equally horrible, says the cruel British judge. I think they're both equally marvelous, says the overly nice British judge. Both judges turn to you. What do you think, tiebreaker judge? Whose meal is truly is the cat's pajamas? Liam's, because I think that glass yard of fresh human. Watch this one. Watch it literally. Pajamas for a cat. Okay, Polly. What? <laughs> Unbelievable! That's not even food! What is the never food? That pile of yarn you're knitting in a frying pan that's clearly set to a pyjamas for a cat! Oh, <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be food. Sorry, I forgot what we were doing. <laughs> Damn, the drug's gone to her head. <laughs> Just look at those eyes! Those <laughs> huge, unblinking eyes. Is <laughs> that the bags of cocaine hanging from the shorts? <laughs> her pockets aren't deep enough, so her cocaine bags are <laughs> slipping out. Yes, it's supposed to be food, and yours obviously isn't! Oh, yeah? Then how come it won the food counter, huh? <laughs> well, because. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'll catch you later. I gotta find a cat to put these pajamas on. Later, you run into Polly again, and she lets you pet her kitty. <laughs> if you know what we mean. Oh my. Oh god! The <laughs> sex really in this game. It means you get to pet that cat, she puts the pajamas on. What do you think I meant? Everybody choose something bad. Say your choices out loud to the rest of the place before clicking. Akari Warriors. Gonorrhea. <laughs> well, that got dark fast. <laughs> Players order decide based on how interesting it would be to see the selected thing was a key component of a supervillain's <laughs> plan in a movie. Yeah, yeah gonorrhea well. would be fucking horrible though. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty weaponizable. Yeah, yeah, I don't see how Akari Warriors would be <laughs> usable. It's would just be. like, play this game and there's like, no, <laughs> it's horrible, no. <laughs> so, uh, what do we vote? I guess the car works is more interesting, actually. Oh, nice, nice, nice! I will go to the gym! <laughs> that day an epic dodgeball match takes place! Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit! Leading the spectacular comeback! You're clearly a natural-born leader! You gain two charm. Charm? Yes! Holy shit, you're lucky. I, I, I got my I got my <coughs> sights on that demon penis. <laughs> you see D Damien about to punch some noob when suddenly a dimensional portal opens between the two of them. Hey, what the hell? I was about to punch that noob. Mm. <laughs> there will be plenty of noobs to punch my fearsome paramour when you are mine. What? I have traveled across time and space to find a fit commander for my armies. And for my bedroom. Oh, you want me to come over to kingdom so we can kill people and fuck? 
I wouldn't put it quite so crassly. Well, I would. And that sounds doper than hell, which isn't hard because hell is lame, but still. But if Damien, Damien goes... They... No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. It's my, it's my no. turn. I'm you sorry. I'm you so can't sorry. take my Please. spotlight. Please, no. Don't kill me. Please. I will send the Gotlands Mafia to you, <laughs> and then they will kill you. But if Damon goes to another dimension to fuck and kill people, how will he fuck and kill people with you? Oh, There's no. only one thing to do. Defeat the prince entirely, shit the army <laughs> using nothing but a colla colander and a grapefruit. What's a colander? Show Damon a picture of the prince's armies wearing clown shoes and assless chaps. <laughs> no! So I would mm. believe that if I try to defeat his army with a grapefruit, I would lose. So I think mm. it's a bigger chance that I would succeed by convincing <coughs> him that they're lame with assless chaps. But he would probably be much more impressed if you defeated the armies with a grapefruit. Yeah, but would I? L let's look this up real quick. Ah, uh, oh, it's a colander. It's the, the thing that you... Uh, um, we take away water from pasta when you have after you co done cooked it. It's a oh. colander. That's fucking dope. I will go for that. <laughs> my uh, colander and my grapefruit will do this. <laughs> Damn it! Armed with a trusty colander helm and a furious grapefruit, you charge through the rift and directly into a fully armed battalion of extra dimensional orcs. They spent the next several hours cutting you up and feeding you you to yourself. <laughs> When you finally manage to piece your body back together and make it home, Damon is already drawing up a battle no. plans with the prince. No! Wait, battle plans? <laughs> For fucking? Fucking plans. <laughs> yes. Dude, your army is so incredibly sick. Did you see what they did to that pathetic loser with the grapefruit? Oh. I'm sad now. I did, my love. I did indeed. Why did you go into this battle with nothing but a kitchen implement and a piece of fruit? Why didn't you bring weapons? You lose two fun and one boldness. Well, I still look happy though. What what can you buy from the shopkeeper, by the way? Uh, so you can buy things that you would need for uh, some special quests with certain people. Uh, mm. And you can buy some equipment that you can use in special locations. You can you can get through a certain situation, and you have five in money. I believe you would afford at least mm. something with that. Yeah, let's uh, go. Yeah. Good old Daniel. What's it going to be today? So these are the things you can buy. Yes, yeah, I, I told you. A temple used from the <coughs> prom queen, of course. Wow. I need that. How much do they cost? Six, one, five, five, ten. Oh, you can't buy the cocaine. Oh fuck. <laughs> I need that to get with the ghost girl. Blanket with two holes. Yes, I I'll use the blanket with two holes to look more like a ghost. Then I can get together with the ghost girl. Of course. It is the perfect plan. Buy it. Thanks. I'm always amazed how people keep coming and buying all this stupid crap. <laughs> Intriguing. Something happened to David. You're engaging in your favorite weekend activity. Ignoring anything in favor of thinking about which classmates you like to take to prom and how horny you are. This game just knows me, man. <laughs> yeah. Knows? yeah, still, I'm 23 years old, <laughs> still thinking about it and how horny I am. When you find out that this is apparently reading on your face. Hey, David! You seem pretty horny and like oh. someone who sits around all day <laughs> thinking about who you're going to take to prom. <laughs> Well, I didn't know that I fucking drew it on my face! <laughs> Whoa! Does she have your number or what? Listen, I'm kinda interested in someone, but honestly, I don't think I could be with any monster who is a spectacular at sex. I know sex is not everything, but it's sort of everything to me. Not really, but it's pretty high on my list of priorities. Sorry if this is TMI. Titillating monster interaction. <laughs> But it's someone you know, so I thought you might have some insight. It's Daniel. Yes, he, he's the best fuck I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck me real good, man. Couldn't walk for a week. I just love sex. Any position, missionary, clergy, apocalyptic, upside down nightmare demon, the pentagram. What do you think? Could Daniel keep up with me? 
Yeah, be, be, be a bro man, be a, be a wing man. I can only say this. He is discoverer of the organs. <laughs> Actually, the whole thing is named after him. Haven't you ever noted that orgasm is an anagram for Daniel? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Once I asked him about uh, he, he thought sex was about, don't ask me why. And he told me that it was the natural process of most living beings to conce <laughs> conceive children. He has no idea. <laughs> now, that sounds more like me. Yeah, but you, you wanna bone that girl. So you're gonna get into those cocaine panties. I, I want to get to know this girl better. Have a long, good, lasting relationship. Are you padding her legs down, taking out the cocaine bags? Like, oh, <laughs> I need this cocaine, man. <laughs> Daniel? Orgasm? <laughs> um, you're totally right! I never noticed that before. Look at her face. She's actually has her mind blown right now. <laughs> it would actually be cool if uh, they actually made it so if your name was the anagram of... <laughs> Orgasm, it worked. And if you, if it wasn't, it didn't work. <laughs> like, actually, it still makes no sense to me. But I'm going to assume that's because I'm high, and it's super legit on the level. You seem to know your letters and words. I'm sure it'll make sense once I sober up. Daniel invented the orgasm, eh? I'm a fan of going straight to the source. I only buy opium from the dude who first discovered it. <laughs> Being dead rocks. <laughs> it sure does. It does it. Meh. Important thing is Daniel, aka Orgasm, totally <laughs> owes you one. Not one <clears throat> orgasm, just a general one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, uh, and you gain three fun. Everybody shoots something cool. Geddy Lee. Nerf guns. Players order decide based on how crazy <clears throat> it would be if 100 years from now the selected thing became the new world's currency. I would love to see people uh, <clears throat> have Geddy <laughs> Lee as currency. Yeah, that would be pretty crazy. Yeah, that it would be more realistic for Nerf guns to be <laughs> a currency. Imagine the wallets. Everybody will have like these gun holsters with guns everywhere. <laughs> yes. Like, I would like an ice cream. Do I not need Leo to pay the money? Is this enough? Mmm. Duh. <laughs> I don't own a Nerf gun. Because else, because else, everybody would have like this train of Geddelis behind them. Like, <laughs> I would like, a, I would like a banana. Just puts up a Gedeli, <laughs> chops yes. off his foot or something. How crazy it would be! Okay, if I'm gonna go by that, actually, Gedeli would be a weird <laughs> currency. Yeah, that would, that would be the crazy currency. I think so too. Mm. Okay, uh. Uh, let's see. Where haven't I been? Outdoors or the bathroom? I don't want to go to the bathroom. The bathroom. Uh, to the toilet. There is no bathroom. <laughs> uh, so I will go to the library. <sighs> it's uh, space Pokemon. Oh, of course it is. Paceman, of course. <laughs> and I also no. love that the sponsoring button is just back that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that day you spend time on the library's PC, madising your start kicker. You deceive lots of people with sensational video and an impossible promise. Noise. You ga gain 100,000 money, but almost everything goes to the cover cost and you keep only two money. You hear a cry of anguish. It sounds like several of your friends getting their ass kicked out of video game and it is... You yeah. find Scott- Damien! Holy fuck this guy. <laughs> Scott, Damien, Liam and the Slayer? They're playing Federation of Fables, the infamous super competitive MOBA. Oh my god, the slave is fucking Whoa. badass. They spot you! Yo. Hey you, David! We need your help. We can't let these noobs win. It's true. This is so serious that we put our feud aside to team up against the greater evil. 13-year-old brats that think they're better than us at FOF. We were kicking their asses, but their younger used a super special kill on our mage and that cursed him to roam the desert for 40 years. In real life! That would be so oh. fucking... <laughs> Are you dying? <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I'm dying. Fuff developers are crazy as fuck. This game is insane. Whoa, we need to destroy their base soon or we lose. Wait, what the fucking voice? I, I, I don't know. I don't fucking remember. <laughs> you know, the food in this cafeteria really is atrocious. It's hardly even worth of my Instagram. 
Wait, they all must have the same fucking voice. Just do some stupid nerdy voice. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I just gotta pinch my nose. Or you can trust me. I'm playing Wally Rex, the Dino Diplomat. I'm in negotiations with one of them. If we reach an agreement, this senseless bloodmouth will end in a peaceful truce. We need to destroy their base before Liam does his lame diplomatic thing. <laughs> I'm Yo the Hole Digger. I'm digging the holes to see what happens. I might find the bone. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't really got a voice for her. Um... You will probably never see her again. You just <laughs> yeah. make it up. That won't help us in any way, wolf boy! No! If I can't find a super cool bone! Come on, David. Join this alliance. Let's fight the good fight. Now it all comes down to making the right choice. <laughs> Which absurd character will be the game changer in this match? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Scott's voice give me the burpees. Gary, the game developer, <clears throat> smite uh, creator of entertainment. Wait, Gary, the, G Gary Busey? Is it Gary Busey? No one, just start dancing in the very stylish way. That always solves your problems, doesn't it? I, I will try for this one, I guess, because Gary Buse is my am. Gary, that's a super risky choice, dude. I think this <laughs> lady's voice has changed every time I've done it. <laughs> We're getting out of voices. We we we're gonna have to, like, go back and redo their voices in post. <laughs> I have to call you up, but, like, dude, you're fucking this up for me, man. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sinking your channel. No! My subscribers! No! Developing a game isn't a fun task. There's a lots of risk and uncertainty. It's not a wise career to choose. Look at him. He's hiding in a bush while developing video games. Not smart. Go, Gary! No! He has spent all his bar mitzvah money! What's that? Gary's using his two-star skills, asking his parents for money, and running a start kicker impress him! He released his game! What is it? Fofi Fof? Federation of Fables inside Federation of Fables? Damien! Look at the other team's champs! They're starting to play Fof e Fof instead of trying to destroy our base! Whoa! They're leaving behind any drive or direction in life! <laughs> Just so they can focus on Puffy Puff. <laughs> Guys, their base is open. Let's go. Who knew? Gary's the badass motherfucker. Yeah, David is the real deal. Everyone is so stoked for the victory that they forget that classmates of yours will be roaming the desert for 40 years. But you gain <laughs> two fun and one smarts. Um, let's go to the outdoors. Okay. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there's like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. Yeah. You gain two fun. Yeah. Yeah, zombies wanna have fun. My voice is fucking destroyed from Scott. Yeah. <laughs> No! Not Scott! <laughs> <laughs> you spot Miranda and Scott in the vicinity. It seems like the perfect opportunity to test, test your new blanket. It's the wrong blanket. people. The ghost isn't here. It's not Polly. <laughs> Fuck. You wear it as if you were a... Oh, you... All right. The blanket. Yeah, you, right. that you bought. <laughs> uh, you wear it as if you were a goofy ghost and approach them with a spooky boo. While Miranda is explaining something to Scott. And that's why those treacherous air people are the absolute worst. And also, most likely tied to the disappearance of Mars Argo. Oh, what's this? A ghost? Perhaps a foreign exchange student. What are you talking about? Oh, guys! <laughs> I didn't see you there. So ghostly. You guys are joking, right? This is clearly just Daniel wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. Jealousy is a powerful drug, Liam. Do not become addicted. Yeah, Liam. Don't you see anyone saying, Wow, Liam is really just Daniel wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. Exactly. Liam, even despite the many times we suspected it was so. What? <laughs> oh, sorry, little ghost. We were ignoring you. That's true. Tell us, do you have any cool ghost powers? Oh, yes. Divulge. Divulge. I'm gonna go with the ultimate one because. 
Because ultimate warrior. Yeah. Oh, you spot a victim for your prank. The coven. You start running in the direction while screaming your best. Boo! <laughs> What's this? Minion of Queen Helenia. Rumors say she's repairing to the big bad of next season. Stop booing at us. It's hard enough as it is to save the world on a daily basis. We don't need people here undermining our morale. Stop booing! <laughs> this school is unbelievable! Ah! Oh my. <laughs> that was not the R I had in mind. It was more like, ah! <laughs> but you're like, ah! <laughs> They go running, looking for a place to recover from all the booing and undermining. <laughs> oh no! What have we done? We made them miserable by forcing our little ghost friend to haunt them with its ghost <clears throat> powers. Do you realize we just ran at them booing? Right? The only thing I realize is that too much ghost powers in our hands made us evil. We got no time to lose. We need to start living lives of good deeds so we can be forgiven for this. You're hmm. right, Scott. Maybe in 10 or 20 years, we can redeem for this moment of weakness. <coughs> At least you left Miranda and Scott onto a path of goodness. Nah, this has been a failure for sure. You lose two smarts and one fun. I love it. Aww. You did a d bad joke and you got <laughs> dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody shoot some movie and say your choice out loud. Blade Runner. Player order is decided based on how idiotic it would be to do a 10 hour remake of the selected movie. Big Hero 6 definitely, I think. <laughs> I mean, Blade Runner... It is already kind of, you know, slow, atmospheric, and... Yeah, so it's a movie that actually could work for that long of a time. I don't know if it would work, but it I... could work more, I think, than Big Hero 6. Okay, I win as usual. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? You just choose badly, like the voice of Damien. Let's go. <laughs> so I will just sit here. You sit down to enjoy a nice normal meal at the spooky high cafeteria, as usual. Lol, JK, something fucked up is always going on here, <laughs> and today it's no different. Oh, hello, David! Do you want to come sit with us <clears throat> and our... Imaginary friend? No one else is here. <laughs> Their imaginary friend roars and the whole cafeteria shakes. Okay, David, you have some smarts. You're probably going to figure this out pretty quickly. Why do we have a wild beast under our table? Why don't you take a guess? He's asking you to guess because he totally forgot our plan! Scott! No we didn't! Shut up! We were going to teach you the piano! Or maybe the saxophone! I lost my notes! I would love that, yeah, like this, just this big bear back. <laughs> no worries, no notes needed. You know exactly what they should do with this wild beast. The wild beast <clears throat> should be the new school mascot. Put him in a sport jersey and let's rock. Uh, Go team! <clears throat> it's obvious you brought such a beast into the kitchen to turn it into the next Monster Chef champion so you can split the big Monster Chef cash prize. I would believe that Scott is Go team. Why is Damien blushing? I would believe that Damien would be more interested in money, so I'm gonna go with the latter one. Yeah, yeah! What a kick ass idea! Which was obvious, Lowers. <laughs> You're right, that was our idea. Hooray! We're geniuses! And I have just what we need here, training manage music. You suddenly you start a training montage in which the three of you try to teach uh, cooking to the wild beast. You suck at this since it's not a big chef yourself and also because it's a wild beast and it keeps on devouring <laughs> people and wrecking havoc. But it's quite an epic training montage. It would just be a horror movie with motivating music. <laughs> <laughs> like, Mount House! <laughs> Afterwards, you're sitting excited in front of a portable TV. The Monster Chef show is, uh, is about to start. You're holding cute supportive signs and you even got yourself a custom-made t-shirt of the Wild Beast. Wow! This is the big day! Also, how is... Oh, <laughs> how is it that we trained the Wild Beast and it's now on the show? If it's still noon and the cafeteria time hasn't even ended! Scott, time works in mysterious ways when it comes to training montages. Okay, boys, I only hope this is a souffle challenge. 
We know the wild beast isn't good at souffles. The wild beast isn't good at anything <laughs> aside from devouring people and wrecking <laughs> havoc. You quietly watch the show. The challenge is beef wellington. Fuck yeah! No souffle! <laughs> it's not so surprisingly. Once the challenge begins, the wild beast just starts to devour the other contestants and destroys the show set. You see the judges screaming, who the fuck let the wild beast <laughs> enter the competition? The wild beast is disqualified. Well, I guess that's it. We might not have won the cash prize, but we won the most valuable of prizes. The prize of laughing at a wild beast fucking up everything in a monster chef set. Which is a memory we'll cherish forever. Is Damien ready to share his memories that include you? Wow. -y. Uh, ghost girl and snake girl. It's a gorgon <laughs> and a poltergeist, you uncultured swine. That's why she's called Polygeist. Oh. <laughs> you arrive at Polly's and Vera's table to find them eating. Wait, both of them? Ah, oh, jam jam! I said they love food and eating. Look at this food going me. <laughs> mm, yes, this is a cafeteria. Sloppy Yo truly has a subtle flavor profile. Finally, notice the cause of this absurdity: a well-dressed businessman sitting at the next table, watching both women intently. Oh. Oh yeah, I know you like this, baby. My eating's realistic and erotic. Oh, what the f- Be cool, Polly. The man wants to pay us for eating in front of him, not screaming about eating. Is this not what eating is? I forget. While Vera tries to explain eating to Polly, the businessman shyly approaches you and gives a small bow. Much obliged, friend, he says in a soft voice. Are these two fine ladies your friends? I must confess that I've searched far and wide for a suitable candidate to fulfill my rather unusual fetish. Paying a student at a high school for monsters to eat food while I watch politely from a distance. <laughs> but I find myself unable to choose which of these two beauties to hire. The snake-headed one possesses a certain grace. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Pay me, motherfucker! Pay me to do a thing mm. I was going to do anyway. But the translucent one has such passion. I don't even want the money. This is just fucking weird and I love it. In your opinion, the businessman finishes. Which would be the wiser choice on my part? Uh, I think the ghost, because I need to get in our good graces. Yes, on those cocaine panties. Yes, I need to get closer to that ass so I can get that cocaine. <laughs> you just have your face buried between <laughs> her ass cheeks, like, get your nose out, it's just powder white. <laughs> like, yeah! The businessman's nod thoughtfully. You know, you're right. I never before have believed so fully that someone was actually eating real food. <laughs> Yep, that's me, eating real food with my real mouth and teeth. Are you kidding me? That's convincing to you. The food is falling right through her butt onto the floor. Don't hate me just because I'm efficient at eating. Don't worry, I hate you for other, more private reasons. What? Sorry, can't hear you. Too busy eating real food. You team up with Polly to make her eating even more realistic. She passes her food through her body to you and you eat it for her. It's pretty hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just have this image where she's like sitting on your face and she eats and it falls through the pants. <laughs> <laughs> onto her face and you're like, oh no, no. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. It's pretty hot. My image was so innocent. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> chooses an object. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. A bad dragon dildo. Oh, I will choose a Buddha figurine. Player order is decided based on how disturbing it would be if the insane person decided to date and marry the selected object. Your, your, you win. A dragon dildo is a weird object I to can date. Act, I can actually see that happening. Yes. <laughs> There's probably someone who also tried to date and marry a Buddha statue. Yeah, but that's not so weird. It was like, okay, so he, he's married yeah. to God kind of but it's buddha <laughs> god it could be seen from more of a religious perspective a huge dragon yeah. dildo is just a huge dragon dildo <laughs> all right congratulations you fucking finally won yes since i'm a guy i don't know if i'll be able to meet her at the bathroom yes you are all right so there's no like limit nope there. nope everybody poops everywhere uh so i go to the bathrooms then of course M maybe she pulled down her cocaine panties and i can steal them for the cocaine uh, yes. Uh, she has my where's my pants looks up and then you see you like buried deep in the pants. Uh, uh, anyway, you, you just right. go to the bathroom. That day you skip class and you just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. 
You give zero <laughs> shits, but you gain two boldness. <laughs> then you realize you're feeling like going full ghost with your blanket again. You're observing your surroundings when you spot Miranda and Damien. You're about to get closer when suddenly... Greetings, beautiful high schoolers! It is I, the interdimensional prince. I love that you just remembered that voice on the spot. It's my normal talking voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wasn't that your first cool guy voice? Maybe? Ah, uh, whatever. I don't have it recorded, so you're, you're, <laughs> you get a pass. You can't prove it. <laughs> Damn it. I'm here to rescue you from your mundane existence. You signed these marriage papers. Not this guy again. Look! Whoa! <gasps> An underworld spectre! <laughs> this again! <laughs> what again? Liam, this is clearly a kick ass powerful ghost. <laughs> Look at his face, it's deadpan. No expression at all. But that's because it's not a face, it's a sheet with two holes cut in it. Man, I wish my face had two holes cut in it. That would be fucking metal. No! Listen, it's not a face, it's. Ghost friend! Help us! Save us from this interdimensional creep! Yeah, do something! Something ghostly! Yeah, he looks creepy as hell when he's happy. Just think about that being his in-bed face. This is hot, man. It's hot. Uh, boo? <laughs> Throw a rock at the intervention prince. <laughs> I'm going to stay in character, and I'm going to boo him. Uh. Ah. Uh. Damn it! <laughs> I wanted to do the Miranda also. That was your entire plan. Ghost friend, we ask for help, not for you to share your ghostly thoughts with us. <laughs> of course, that's all the ghost thinks about. There is a time to boo and a time to act. I should have never expected a ghost to save us. He is not a ghost, god damn it! <laughs> You're not helping either, Liam. You leave the fourth one to solve their own tricky non-consensual abduction situation while you reflect on your ghost skills. <laughs> Could it be that you're not a good ghost? You thought that wearing a blanket with two hole cuts in it was enough. Now you lose two smarts and one creativity. You just get dumber and dumber by the day. <laughs> so, so I will go for fun. That day during yeah. recess you start a half hour <clears throat> rave that goes full crazy. At one point, John, the small magical Latino cat, slips in on a banana peel. You start laughing. What? That's Juan. <laughs> no, it's Joan. You know, like they can be named Jesus. And it's pronounced <laughs> Jesus. You start laughing at him. He asks you to stop, but you don't. Uh, you laugh so hard at him that I somehow steal too fun from him. Hooray! You notice <clears throat> Damien and Miranda oh. squatting on the grass, poking something with a stick. You rush over, hoping for a dead possum, but instead you find them gathering around the entire tiny metropolis. Check this shit out. It's our kingdom. I call it Smalltopia. Now wait, he's, he got to have the Irish accents. <laughs> a tiny voice from the city shouts up to you. It's so called the West Bomberly. This is not an Irish accent. <laughs> you become the Italian. And we're not a monarchy. I was gonna just burn it all with a magnifying glass. But I'm happy Miranda stopped me. It's good to be king. The tiny voice from the city said, We're a vote of our leaders in a banal in our elections. But we are facing a quandary. How to boost our kingdom's struggling economy. Yeah, the whole place has been facing an economic recession ever since a pigeon stole the hospital to build its nest. <laughs> the tiny voice says, That red guy stole the hospital and lied about it. Hoita toita toit. Now it's getting back to the Irish. <laughs> Double the morning to you laddies. I'm used to mag managing kingdoms that are significantly larger and much more underwater. I'm afraid I'm at a loss. Yeah. Hey, how about you being a royal advisor? The pay shit, but you can take whatever buildings you want. <laughs> hey, says the tiny voice. <laughs> Build a new hospital out of popsicle sticks and hot glue. You know what always boosts an economy? War! I think I saw an anthill over by the water fountain. Fuck yeah. Fuck. And the three of you instigate a war with the ants by leaving a trail of syrup between the small top and the anthill. Hell yes! This is awesome! They're gonna fucking kill each other! <laughs> the, and the resulting war economy will erase their hospital troubles entirely! Yeah, because there will be no one left. Hey, what's going on down there? Are the ants sending... And an ambassador! Yes! They seem to be signing some sort of treaty. 
It says that both sides recognize that the true enemy lies elsewhere. Damien, oh. why are you looking at us? <laughs> but before anyone can answer, the first Maltopian missiles hit you in the face. You take constant fire from the tiny peoples. Very small arms while the ants swarm all over your bodies. You mm. seriously underestimated the strength of the war economy. <laughs> you lose two boldness and one smarts. If you look at our stats in the top right, uh, you, you're <coughs> super brave and dumb as fuck. And I'm super <laughs> creative and super coward. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, mm. something happened to Daniel? What? On Saturday night, you're at a cool pizza place that cooks pizza in a real pizza oven. Little do you expect that when the chef opens the oven to get your pizza, Damien appears from the flames. How does that work? Can he teleport through fire? Has been waiting inside the oven all, all this time just to make a kick-ass entrance? Ah, the mystery. <laughs> Mad dude! I fucking hate needing people's help, but I might need yours. Don't let it get your head or I'll stab you so I don't have to owe you anything. Enough threats. Here's the deal, fuckhead. I might... Or might not feel attracted to your buddy, David. You know the one. Always making absurd choices. Being equal parts stupid is sexy and sexy stupid. And with a nice booty. Oh my! I didn't know the demon was a nice man. Look at him. Of course he is. But I do not want to get my feelings hurt by rushing into love without proper judgment. My dads always say, if you love someone, shoot him and see what happens. <laughs> Great fatherly advice, right? Thing is... Principal Giant Spider, my therapist, and the rule of law all seem to think that shooting someone to check if they're the one is not very legal. They have strongly recommended that I do all that on what they call a theoretical level. Like imagining the whole thing. But imagining it is for losers. And since you both know David, and a loser, and are a loser yourself, I thought you could tell me, what would David do if I were to shoot them? <laughs> Die. <laughs> <laughs> David is all about getting shots. They go to the doctor every day just to get a shot. And shots are the only thing they do when partying. So I think you can give them a shot. Uh -huh. Believe it or not, if you were to shoot David, they would not be into it. True story. Uh, uh, you're, you're all about getting shot. Nice. Whoa. That's convenient. I have the feeling dating me could increase someone's chances of getting shot. Or stabbed. You don't get to be as big an asshole as me without making some enemies along the way. I would feel bad if my loved one was to get shot because of me, but <laughs> knowing David is so into getting shot is a relief. I fucking hate guilt. <laughs> okay, it seems like my heart isn't being a drunk idiot this time. I might be onto something. Nah. <laughs> and who knows? If you're so into getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> I might add some spice into my foreplay, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean, shooting David before having sex with them, just to be clear. Wowee, you're welcome, David, both for getting you some demon dick and for the blood loss you're about to experience. You've had too much blood anyway. <laughs> you get three charm for being such a good friend. Everybody choose a food. Sushi. Lasagna. Player order in the side based on how powerful an <clears throat> energy drink those key ingredients selected food would be. Raw fish energy drink. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> you, you would just like drink yeah. this and but you feel the chunks of salmon in your <laughs> drink. But, uh, uh, or would you prefer pasta and bechamel sauce and... Uh... Minced meat. Powerful is weird because I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel either pasta or sushi wakes you up very well. I mean, sushi might because... It... It's nasty. I mean, I guess it will just be pasta water. Mmm! <laughs> Salty energy drink. Oh, so nutritious. Yeah, mm. I, I would have to go with mine, because it, <laughs> it has some kind of bearing ground yeah. in sense, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I win again. You're good at this. Uh, yes, I'm good at this, choosing random things. <laughs> I want boldness, so I'm gonna go to the toilet. So I have just two in boldness. I want boldness, so I go to the pooper. Mm. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> that day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. On the way there you run into Mamimi, the Oni girl. What's an Oni? Oni is a Japanese demon, more or less. She offers you Ooh. some of her weird Japanese energy drink. Is it sushi? <laughs> is it a sushi energy drink? <clears throat> you take a sip. It tastes crazy as hell. You need to check the contents of this shit. Garner seed expected bionicles. 100 milligram of boldness. Boldness? But it wasn't bad at all. You gain two boldness, thank Mamimi. And proceed to the bathrooms. <laughs> 
You're chilling out, not murdering anybody. When Damien slinks up to you, he's howling a large sack of the words definitely not a corpse written on it. <laughs> hey, I'm, uh, you're not gonna believe this, but there's definitely actually a corpse in this bag. <laughs> I would never imagine. <laughs> you would never have guessed. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying I'm exactly <laughs> responsible for making this corpse. Uh, at least not without my lawyer presence. But let's just say he and I apparently had a very different definitions of rock, paper, scissors. Uh, anyway, I'm not interested in going back to jail, so I need you to help me hide this body real quick. It would be an uh, <laughs> extremely attractive thing to do. How you test out <laughs> if someone's <laughs> uh, boyfriend material. Luckily, hiding dead bodies is kind of your thing. You share your brilliant solution. Disguise him as a drinking fountain, no one will know the difference. <laughs> Just chuck him in my garage, uh, he'll blend perfectly with my, my collection of vintage dead bodies. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> if I already have vintage dead bodies, I guess that actually would be a good hiding place for him. Nah, not so bold. Fuck. <clears throat> you throw the corpse in the back of Damien's dread chariot and hoof it over to your garage. Holy hell! Are these all yours? Some of these are real classics. <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> Off. Pope John Paul the First. <laughs> Wait a second. These are all people I murdered. Have, have, have you been stealing my murders this whole time? <laughs> all this time I thought you were a super cool serial killer. But you're really just a low-life kill stealer. <laughs> Shame on you. Get your own murder victim. Damien storms out of your house, smoke literally coming out of his ears. Damn, you hope he wouldn't notice. You lose. Uh, minus two creativity and one charm. Um, I'll go to the auditorium. Creativity! Yes, you're the dragon! That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you do a terrific job at acting. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses to be exact. Damn, roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyway, you check your converter app to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. Hmm, it seems seven roses equals two creativity points. <laughs> Sweet! You gain two creativity. You go up to the light booth to see how Polly and Damien are doing. Oh god. Lamb! That's how we're doing. If I know they're sticking me up here, just because I missed additions to go to that monster truck rally, I still would have gone to that monster truck rally. But I would have gotten in there in like nine more fights while I was there. Well, I have to be on so many cool drugs during casting. I thought the lights were butterflies and I just wanted to play with them. <laughs> it's all in the past now. As long as we're here, I guess we better make the best of it. By fucking with Liam! <laughs> but he's so hard to mess with. He's like really good at acting. Come on! Between the three of us, I'm sure there's something we can do to make him forget his lines. We write the whole play, but just Liam's lines. Rocket launch. <laughs> Rewrite the whole play, but Liam slimes. So, so he, he his won't make sense anymore. Oh yeah, that that sounds like the the thing that would piss him off actually. Yeah. All right, let's go with that. Hell yeah, riding. Hell yeah, vandalism. Everything is going super well until you get your hands on the script and realize you've forgotten how to read. <laughs> oh no, am I so dumb? <laughs> am I that dumb? Hey, why are you saying the script upside down like that? Oh my god, he can't <laughs> read! Forget messing with Liam, this is way fucking funnier. Oh, if only you went to class once in a while instead of constantly trying to bang your classmates. You lose three smarts. I am negative smarts. Choose a brand, Heinz. Kellogg's. Okay, we both just went for food. I think they meant like <laughs> cars or something. We were like, I like food. <laughs> Player order and decide based on who, how funny and crazy it would be if the selected brand teamed up with a, a popular K-pop group that starred in all their ads. It wouldn't be funny either way. It would just be something they actually could do. But the, like Kellogg's would be like, Get your circumcision, yeah. Get your penis chopped off. <laughs> what? Kellogg's was uh, 
was with circumcision. He was like, buy our Kellogg's, get a free <laughs> circumcision. It's just like this nasty old 1800s kind of scissor, like just in the Cornflakes <laughs> package. Yeah, I, I would say yours just because it would still be K-pop. So that would actually be kind of fun. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, uh, ghost. The ghost. Liam and Polly aren't alone at their table. They're flanked by two beefy hobgoblins in security uniforms. What? Do these two have bodyguards now? They aren't bodyguards. They're food guards. Principal Giant Spider found out we were eating during lunch, so he assigned guards to us because he thinks we have an eating disorder. And we do mm. have an eating disorder. It's called being dead. Except it's not eating disorder, it's identity and the lifestyle. Death style! It's death metal combined with hard style. Whatever. The point is that they won't let us leave until we eat on our food. Which would be never. And I have a meeting in the Smug Superiority Club to conduct the next period. I can't be late. Yeah. If you could just figure out a way around those food guards for us, I'd be super grateful, like, in a sexy way. Well, you can't say no to that. Time to enact your fiendishly clever plan. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Need that cocaine. <laughs> With all the deafness and raw sexuality of Indiana Jones, you empty Polly's food onto Liam's plate <laughs> and his lap. Ah, stop that. It's too much food. I can't even artfully arrange it for a decent food pick. Meanwhile, I seem to have eaten 100% of the food on my plate. No problem. Nothing to see here. Luckily for you and Polly, the hobgoblins are complete idiots with no object permanence. They can't instantly believe Polly's lie. You traitors! I thought we were in this together! You thought? That was your first mistake. I stay high all the time, so I never think. <laughs> Perfect defense. You and Polly ditch the cafeteria and then ditch school. And then do so many drugs you end up in a ditch. So responsible! <laughs> and I will fuck up your voice. Yeah, sip that water. You need it, man. You find Damon and Vera contemplating a huge slab of undefiable prime meat. All right, Damon. I know we had our share of disagreements during this convoluted poaching expedition. Like when you told me not to bring all my knives. But I trust that we can put our differences behind us and enjoy the fruits of our labors. You mean the meats of our labors? Uh -huh. Yes. Together we will enjoy this raw bloody cut of meat as a symbol of our wait uh, raw and bloody <laughs> you mean you're not even going to try using fire on it of course i used fire i specifically instructed the chef to prepare this meat while glancing briefly at a lit stove did the fire ever you know touch the meat what would be the point of that a cut this fine can only be eaten ultra rare like hell it can you wait here while I get my culinary flamethrower. That's uh, Gordon Ramsay's seal of approval. Damien, please, let's be reasonable about this. What is reasonable? If we can't come to an agreement, let's appeal to an arbitrary third party. David will surely make the intelligent choice for us. Isn't that right? Uh, I'm just gonna go with the correct one. That's what I like to hear. That and the sounds of screaming people fleeing a burning building. But roasting totally destroys the flavor of... I'm talking! Fire time now! <laughs> As you flee screaming from the burning building, you can find Damien right beside you. He takes your hands and... <laughs> it almost makes the third degree <clears throat> burst and massive property <laughs> damage worth it. Everybody choose an animal. Uh, snake. Uh, Red panda. <laughs> Player order is decided based on how hilarious it would be if Daniel died after being attacked by eight of the select... <laughs> eight red pandas would be the fucking most hilarious. <laughs> They're the clumsiest fucking animal ever. Have you seen the video where they scare it with a boat? Yeah, it's <laughs> and he's like, ah! <laughs> no, don't kill me. Okay, yeah, you win. No contest. Yeah. Yeah. Snakes just a normal thing. Eight snakes would actually be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, that would be fucking horrifying. <laughs> so I'll go to the gym. The goom. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. The match is so intense and both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes by betting part of your charm against a part of the other team leader's charm. That commitment amazes your whole team and their spirit is fueled by determination. 
Finally you win and take two charm from the other team's leader. She's now a bit less fabulous. You could start doing something productive. Or you could put on your blanket and get up some good old ghost shenanigans. <laughs> this blanket, man. It's my lifestyle now. You're looking for someone. But you're running to the person that might finally see you through your ghostly deception, apart from boring you. <laughs> Hiya! Wait, what's this? Another ghost? I can't believe this. Finally, somebody else notices. This is clearly just Daniel wearing a... I can't believe it! It's just too cool to be true! Come on! <laughs> it's not cool nor true! Shh, Liam. I can't hear a cool new ghost friend over your, all your jealousy. So tell me, how do you die? We have to share so much ghost gossip, or <laughs> ghost sip as I like to call it. Hmm, good question. Time to prove a lie with another bigger lie. <laughs> Man, <laughs> these are both good. I like ghost wink. <laughs> so charming. Whoa, yes. So <laughs> enticing. I mean, to me, third date is always the hardcore stuff. Shibari. <laughs> Highly dangerous sex toys or meeting the parents. <laughs> now we finally get to see the huge dragon dildo. <laughs> but, but the question is, am I talking about the parents or the sex toy? <gasps> because we were talking about the guy <clears throat> earlier getting married to a sex toy. <laughs> I'm a product of a guy and a sex toy. <laughs> <laughs> That's your father. It's, a, it's just a big, huge dragon dildo at the table. <laughs> it's like... Don't be rude to your mother! Dad, you have to keep that at the table. Don't, don't <laughs> talk about your mother that way. Smacks you across the face. <laughs> your mother didn't that raise is... you this way. <laughs> yeah. She's just on the other side of the table like... Bzzz. <laughs> just falls over. You know your mother's sick. So that means you died in some awesome and stupid fashion. Probably something involving sharks or bath salts. Or none of that, since he's just Daniel wearing a blanket. Oh uh, yeah, and Liam, you know that he's a zombie. For good sake, Liam, why don't you wear a blanket somewhere else? <laughs> Come on, ghost friend, let's do something ghostly, like pet some llamas. <laughs> That's definitely not a ghost thing. It is if you're a ghost, ha, huh? duh. <laughs> I can't argue <laughs> with that logic. And then you spend a great ghost evening petting some silly llamas. You gain two fun and one charm. I'm still gonna go to the bathroom, I need that boldness. I'm going to the toilet, you're pooping. Uh, it's so bold. <laughs> uh, that day you skip class into the spending term in the bathrooms. Uh, but you encounter three wild hyenas in the way there. Who the fuck runs security here? Anyway, you subdue them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the monster scouts and all the idiotic scenarios they prepared you for. By the time you get to, to the bathrooms, you totally gained two boldness. It's later than you minding your own business and you're definitely not doodling pictures of Damien in your notebook <laughs> when you see Damien making his way over to you. And at which point you definitely do not uh, hide your drawings. Yo, so here's the thing. You know, I think most people are pretty much 100% fuck awful fuck doors. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I actually think you're only 70% awful of Fuckdoor tops. In fact, I I actually think you're kinda rad. I've been meaning to get a new tattoo since nothing as rad as intentionally sticking needles into yourself to create a permanent image on your skin for fucking ever. And I thought, maybe we could get matching tattoos if you can come up with something rad for us. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It's your chance once for all convince Damien of how awesome you are. Don't fuck this up. It's time to suggest the baddest, raddest, maddest tattoo of all time, which is a sea cucumber. <laughs> An on fire pentagram made out of pentagrams, and those pentagrams are made out of guns that shoot pentagrams, and the pentagrams are on fire, and the fire is on fire. I'm gonna go with the above because that would make sense because he wants to be badass. And I don't believe sea cucumbers are that cool. They're just slimy and weird. So I'm going on the, out on a limb here and choosing pentagrams and pentagrams. Mm. The right choice was the sea cucumber, of course. Damien stares at you utterly expressionless. Then he slowly lifts up <coughs> his shirt, alright. Which at uh, first you think is kind of hot. To reveal a tattoo of an on fire pentagram made out of pentagrams and those pentagrams are made out of guns and they shoot pentagrams and the pentagrams are on fire and the fire is on fire. Oh fuck. He lowers his shirt. Have you been spying on me when I'm naked? Maybe. I thought you were awesome. I thought we could be linked together forever with rad matching tattoos. No one told me that you were a 
creepy voyeur who spies on naked people. That's right, everybody. David is a creepy voyeur who spies on naked people. Go get your own tattoo. Like, creepy voyeur on your forehead. What are the odds that that uh, be Damon's exact tattoo? Okay, who will you ask to prom? Mm. What are y'all? Yeah, uh, yes, you. <laughs> it's, it's you. I, I, I'll take the, the cocaine ghost. Yeah. She has the cocaine panties. <laughs> are you sure? Yeah. Well, I, I probably fucked this up by now, but I haven't <clears throat> done anything good with anyone else, so... Hey, noob. <laughs> I will just try this out. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Prom? With you? How can I put this delicately? Fuck no! What a loser! Oh. <laughs> I'm sad now. It all seemed pretty bleak, but you're a natural fighter, so you fought for the right to marry your own hand since that seems like your last chance of finding love. Hey, look at you. It's my favorite ghost other than myself. Wait, does that mean you actually have the blanket on you? <laughs> Prom? Sure. We can go and do lots of ghost things, dancing, getting drunk as fuck, having sex. Nice. Does she have the remotest idea of what things are exclusive to ghosts? Ghost date! Yay! <laughs> Prom night is the best ghost date ever. Of course, you fail to see what the difference is between a ghost date and a regular date. That's the, beside the point here. You score with Polly, and all it took was wearing a stupid blanket with two holes cut in it. So we actually completed uh. the game. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. What the fuck is that? What, in the middle? Weird. Yeah. It's ditto. Did he get a penis hair? No, it's not hair, it's just his dong. <laughs> After Monster Prime, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened. And it was wonderful. Miranda and Damien received an award from Smalltopia for their work as city planners. <laughs> Smalltopia citizens still insist the award was fake and they pray for the two of them to stop messing. <laughs> Polly took a summer job as the ghost of Christmas present. What? Summer job? Yeah, fuck off. She spent most of the time partying since there was almost no work because, you know, it was summer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that was the joke. Scott became a world-renowned athlete, but he ended his career to come back to his hometown and take on the job of the athlete he admired the most. Now he's here again at high school, working as coach. During these three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then. There were lots of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. So yeah, we actually made it through. And you actually got yeah. the K pants. Yay! Anyways, so uh, it uh, was uh, nice playing with you. Yeah, thank you. It was nice joining you. We'll see <laughs> you in the next episode. Mm, bye! Bye! <laughs>